Good Time. That's the Safdie's movie before Uncut Gems. The Death of Stalin. Love that movie. The Last Black Man in San Francisco on Amazon Prime. The Handmaiden, Amazon Prime. Goon, which is streaming everywhere. Mud, directed by Jeff Nichols. Love that movie. And About Time is streaming as well. So those are my <laughs> underrated streaming movies that are out right now. Man, I, I, I couldn't even I couldn't even think about streaming movies right now that, that I'd be all over. Yeah, it's it just... I, I, I guess if I had... Oh, Haywire, I have in here. I guess if you're going to watch one that you might not have heard of, just for me, I would recommend The Guest, Goon, and Haywire. And I still have not seen The Guest. The Guest, Goon, or Haywire. Those are the three. And, and you recently, not recently, in the last couple months, you did a Haywire Final Fights episode, which I quite enjoyed. Yeah, with Megan. Yeah, we love that movie. I mean, Gina it's... Carano, Steven Soderbergh, he loved watching her run, so he just gave her an extra running scene. <laughs> it makes it so funny. I, I, I forgot how much I liked that movie until I was kind of recounting your recollections of it and thinking, oh, that's right. I did. Oh, that was awesome. Too. Yeah, that beach fight was great. Oh, yeah, like they didn't – yeah, she dismantled you and McGregor on that beach. That must have been exhausting on that sand. I do remember thinking the fight on the sand, like that would be terrible. Fighting yeah. on the sand after running across sand, you're going to fight for your – you're running for your life in the sand, mm -hmm. and then you are fighting for your life in the sand against someone who you're going to try and beat. But you assume that you're going to lose this. Mm -hmm. That's why you were running for your life. In the, like that, the futility of that. <laughs> he, he kept trying to run. And uh, uh, his kind of feral fighting, you and McGregor. I liked, I love that fight. J.J. Perry did that fight. He's a great stunt choreographer, stunt coordinator. He's also worked on Captain America Civil War, Mortal Kombat. The dude's done some amazing, he, he was a uh, second unit on Bloodshot. So, I mean, that guy's done some awesome haywire. But those are my three. Those are what I would recommend. Gina Carano needs to be in more movies. She's found a great I mean, home on Mandalorian, which I love. Right. Mandalorian's wonderful. But I I, I feel like she, we and she were, were done a disservice when she didn't get, even if they were more minor movies, more leading roles. Like, yeah, sure, we also saw her in Fast Five. But I, I want to see her. I want to see her do more. She has a movie with Cam Jigu... Jigu... Gigandit? Yeah, Gigandit. She has to save him. him. <laughs> she has to save him. Is it new? No, it's, a few, it's probably 2014, 2015. But yeah, it's streaming. So she has to save... I think he gets kidnapped and she has to save him. I guess he lost his uh, his never back down fighting skills. That's right. And he didn't have Jaiman Huntsu there to train him. Right. All right, so how about this? We got those two questions done. I want to do something. This is going to be unique, John. You're going to do a weird draft that makes let's, me uncomfortable? Let's do a weird draft, <laughs> but let's pick movies we've covered on the podcast Ooh, to celebrate not... our 300th episode. Okay, now are we being – is there a theme to it within that or no? Uh, no, I think just movies that we've picked, that we've done. Okay. Oh, man, we're going to be – I know that there's like there's like five movies that are going to pop in like both of our heads mm -hmm. that we're both going to want. This okay. Be tough. Um, okay. Uh, I'll give you first pick. I get first pick? Yeah. I'm going to take – it's like one of two in my head right now. Um, but, 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 but I will take Bram Stoker. Ooh, yeah. Bram Stoker's what... Dracula. Well, then I think, was... you know what, I think you know what I'm going to pick. Are you going to take Event Horizon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. Was, that was the other one I was I had in my head. Because yeah, those are two of our really popular episodes, so I, I, I like doing that one. I'm going to take The Babysitter, which is a great movie that's oh, still yeah. streaming because it's a Netflix original. Oh, yeah, that one's underappreciated. There's a sequel coming out, too. Yeah, but it doesn't have uh, yeah. Samara Weaver in it. No Samara. All right, so let's see, The Babysitter. All right, I'm going to take, let's see, let's see. So you have Bram Stoker's Dracula. And Re I'm going to pick Resident Evil because I love our Resident Evil series. That's like one of the, the highlights of the time on MFF, just talking about that movie because I – I don't know. I loved our breakdown of that. That was a good oh, yeah. time. I, mean, I, I, I would just argue that you're taking like our Resident Evil series. No, no, no. Just that. Because uh, I'm not going to pick a different one. Um, but uh, okay, I will do Happy Death Day. Oh yeah, that's a fun one. I'm, trying, I'm going through some of our older episodes because we've had some we've we've had some fun one. Oh man, I'm I'm staying. Oh wow, that one's good. Actually, sorry that I forgot something, and I just wrote it down a little note for myself, hoping that you don't make me scribble it out right now. All right, so let's see. Oh, man. There's so many episodes we've done. Hex, Hex, 
Yes, remember baseball? Steve Perry. <laughs> Steve Perry. <laughs> Dude, I thought we agreed no more journey psych outs. I haven't watched that movie in forever. All right. All right. So ooh, I'm going through all of our Resident Evil. We have so many episodes, it's not even doing it anymore. Bram, I really enjoyed that Bram Stoker's Dracula. Let's see. Ooh, we did Mayhem. And Belko together. And Belko, Office yeah. Horror. That was a good one. Yeah. I know, I know I'm taking forever, guys. I know I'm taking forever. That was especially good because they sent me the Blu-ray for free with all those with all, all my Belko experiment pens. Oh, I yeah. showed my lab technician that because he's really into horror. He just started like six months ago working with me. I showed him that pen. He's like, whoa. I'm like, oh, my God. Someone else who would think it's cool to have Belko experiment get pens. That movie's <laughs> gnarly. Upgrade. I'm taking Upgrade. Oh, that's a good one. That's good. Okay. All right, so I suggested really, though, because I don't want to pick one because you did. You took the Resident Evil series. I'm taking the Final Destination series. There it is. Which one? Do you want Final Destination 5? Do you want the series? I'd say I'd say 5. Okay, Final Destination. Yeah, if, I, if I'm picking one specifically, I'm picking 5. Oh, man. All right. Would, so... you, would you take Resident Evil 1 or the final chapter? Uh, you, you meant, no, no. You, you I mean, meant original like final Resident chapter. I mean, I'll take one. I, I love four and five the most, but I like one. That's where we started. I just like how final chapter tied it together so oh, much. Yeah. So there's so. Oh, oh no. <gasps> oh. All right, all right. I've got. I've got, I'm really torn for my last take, pick. We did the happening, right? Oh, oh dude. I, I I listened to that with my lag tech lab yeah. technician. That was a lot of fun listening to that. All right, I'll take the dude, happening. Dude, we did. We did our Mark Wahlberg impressions. <laughs> hey, plant. What happened to all the bees? <laughs> <laughs> all right, and you're up. Okay, I, all right. I'm, now, I'm sure that if I – I'm glad I did not look at a list of our podcast episodes because I'd be short-circuiting like crazy. I'm just going from memory. So I've got two things stuck in my head right now, Rush and Captain Ron. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I mean, Rush was very emotionally, deeply satisfying – uh, to discuss those rich characters. And Captain Ron is a movie that I grew up loving so, so much. I, you know, I don't have a Kurt Russell movie in here yet. I'm saying Captain Ron. Oh, oh no! Captain. The Thing! No, I'm taking The Thing. Oh, that's over. We're, it's all over now. I'm taking you The Thing. How, you see, it's like I said, I, I wasn't looking at a list, so I wasn't thinking. Oh, man. So you got but The I, Thing. I, I, I mean, you got Rush, you got Captain Ron. Uh, I have one. I'm going to take the Fright Night remake because I love that movie. We did that. That was a series we did. Yep. So listeners, we did in, 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 I think we did it in two episodes instead of four. I think we did Fright Night one and two and then the remakes one and two or, or was it four episodes? What did we do? We never talked about Fright Night two. No, we, we it did was one episode. It was one episode that we did. Okay. It was just Fright Night versus Fright Night. Mm hmm. You're going to crush me here. You have Bram Stoker's Dracula, The Babysitter, Happy Death Day, Final Destination 5, The Thing. I have Event Horizon, Resident Evil, Upgrade, The Happening, and The Fright Night Remake. Do you realize that we both chose all horror or adjacent things? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, that was not on purpose. I mean, again, I wrote down Rush. I wrote down Captain Ron, but I just ended up going to the – of course, that's the, that's what a lot of our stuff is. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, I, don't know. I, I, I think we had a good time with these. That's – I think Bram Stoker's Dracula and Event Horizon were when we started kind of uh, uh, changing up a little bit. A lot more research, less questions, I think, just exploring the movies real in-depth. Right. So not that it was bad before, but I think that was kind of like where we started going. And all right, so let's see. We did the drafts. We did the questions. Let's let's get back into Escape from L.A. So, John, I'm going to ask you something. Three favorite moments from this Oof. movie. Okay. Three favorite moments. Okay. Uh, j just moments. Mm -hmm. All right. Remember when Stacy Keach is explaining to uh, his colleague, uh, the woman from California, with a Brazen. K, that Brazen. I can't think. I can't think of her. Michelle name. Forbes. Her. I mean, he's talking to her, and he's like, "Yeah, you know, he did this job for us uh, 16 years ago in New York." Yeah, it's like, "Oh, he's he's a total animal." It's like, "Yeah." The, like, what did he write? He wrote back in the good old days. And again, that made me think of what so many times in the movie of Demolition Man when. When when the old when when the old guy is explaining to Sandra Bullock, he was this kind of cop, you know. He did this, that, and the other, and she says it sounds more like an animal. He says, "Yeah, he's an old school, you know, something like that." Um, yeah. You know, the, you know, back back in the good old days, cops were tough, and so it made me think of that. I, I really liked that scene, that that line, just the good old days, because mm -hmm. it's also telling me that he's not fond of the theocracy they live in, even though he's he's a good company man representing it. When he said no red meat, 
like no smoking, no this, no red meat. It almost sounded like he wanted a steak yeah. as he was saying it. <laughs> like like he wants he, all three. I, I didn't feel like he was an acolyte for that. So that's one of them. Another one, I'm going to go to the end. Um, and I'm going to say when Snake Plissken basically fury roads the world. Yeah, he does. Um, when he puts in the code for the world – and all devices this are going down, and Stacy Keach is like, "You're going to send us back to the Ice Age." It's like, not really. I think you guys are going to be fine, and uh, you know, ten or twenty years, but you're going to have a couple really bad pandemonium, riotous, fury road years mm -hmm. first. So I love because right when he did that, I'm just like, he just fury roaded them. He's so cold. There's going to be wars because all those people are attacking the the, the shores. And and uh, I guess another favorite moment would be. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to split it with two related moments. One, the tray of eyes that don't make sense in the Surgeon General's lair. But when, when the Surgeon General is examining Snake Plissken and he says, what a beautiful blue eye. Yeah, it's I love shame. that. It's only one of them. But the way he, he kind of aggressively moved his head as he was examining him, total disregard. You know, it made me think of like when a, when a, sh a dog show – judge is like lifting up the, their yeah. their lip to see the canines or something and the dog just sits there and takes it <laughs> and just watching bruce and kurt together weird, weird weird little moments really really stick out for we me we should do sky high next because that's their reunion even though they're never on screen together <laughs> all right my three are just quotes so i love it when he's like well you two uh Will you two be here? Wait, uh, come to get me when I'm leaving? They're like, no. And he tries to shoot him, but he has all blanks in his gun. He was just going to murder those two. Right. He, he was just going to kill them. And I love that. It's just the new snake, just a murderer. So I love that. Yeah. I like when he sees the team, the one guy strung up, getting knives thrown into him. He goes, hell of a team. <laughs> That was so we you, you mentioned in the beginning how there there were some brutal things and like yeah when they threw the when they were throwing the knives into that guy I'm not saying that that took me out of the movie I'm not saying that that was specifically out of place but that's a little different from him randomly shooting people Yeah he doesn't There is an insidiousness to that you know yeah. what I mean and in that I think that when you're first watching the movie you feel like you're in for a more pandemonious world than it actually is mm -hmm. when you see that that was gnarly when you, yeah it, you don't see too much more of that I, you're right but i just love that line hell of a team and then also my favorite is you slow down dickhead i'm dying <laughs> you texted me that the other day <laughs> this makes me so happy i for, remember the last time just i love hearing people say i know who you are i just love his one-liners and i like it when cuervo says uh and none of that three-point bullshit <laughs> That makes me happy. But uh, for me, it's always about Snake's lines. And in this movie, I, I just dig just all of the sarcasm of him. I mean, it retreads some things, but I don't know. I'd rather hang out with him than not. And I also thought it was interesting how Hers Hershey was right about the uh, the virus, the virus seven, pl Plunicism seven virus, when they said, she's like, yeah, that's not real. It's government. Yeah, it's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was bullshit, which, which makes me laugh. But uh, this movie, man, it just... It's bonkers. It's weird. They spent 70 nights shooting it. John Carpenter admits that his love of Snake kind of made them write a remake instead of a sequel, even though it is a sequel, because it is beat for beat. But I'd still rather spend time with Snake than not. And I do think they did something different. This one's real sarcastic. It's like the, the production designer. I mean, this, the production designer, right? He worked on... Blade Runner and Back to the Future, Romancing the Stone, City Slickers. He was huge. This movie had a pedigree. So the cinematographer, Gary uh, B. Keeb, he did Prince of Darkness, They Live, Vampires, Mouth of Madness, Ghosts of Mars. He was Rob Reiner's guy for years. There was a lot. Uh, uh, Robin Michael Bush did the costumes. I love the costumes in this. Jeff Amata, the stunts. He did They Live, Mortal Kombat, Role Models, which is weird. But Rick Baker did the makeup effects. This had an A plus aside from the visual effects. No, it's not, yeah, aside from the visual effects, I think everything in this movie had a had a an A crew working on it. This had talent yeah. behind the scenes. You know, it's interesting. We were talking about the, the knife throwing into the the body and and how we don't really see more of that. This movie wasn't as mean as the original. The yeah. original was meaner. With the original, so in this one, we see him come into the world and he sees the knives being thrown into one of the the rescue 
crew SWAT kind of guys, special forces kind of guys. When we see him come into New York, there was that 